Novak, thank you so much for joining us on a, on a bit of a odd day. Um, first, I must ask, we just had a little bit of banter. You're, you're going to get a little cleaned up, your hair, after, yes, the, after uh, the interview. Yes, well, the idea was uh, to get a haircut before I come and sit here with you because I wanted to somewhat come closer to your looks, but then I realized <laughs> that uh, that's not possible, so I just came and just dealt with my destiny and reality <laughs> that uh, second best looking on this table. What a guy, what a guy. <laughs> you're off to a brilliant start here. <laughs> so yeah. you're not like a superstitious guy. Borg sometimes wouldn't shave his beard at all during a Wimbledon, yeah. but you don't, you don't mind. Well, I, I don't know. I, I probably was a bit more superstitious when I was younger. I, 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 I remember I was shaving my, my beard uh, basically for every match. I had to look fresh because my grandfather, well, he was still alive. He would criticize me a lot if I had some beard on. Oh, interesting. So it was like a little bit of a, 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 an ongoing internal family <laughs> relationship thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't don't like to, to shave my beard fully nowadays. I don't know. I, I'm skinny anyway, so I feel like if I shave it all, <laughs> then it's, it makes me look even skinnier. You're going to lose the gains. <laughs> uh, Novak, uh, odd day today. I know we were all looking forward to this uh, tremendous match with Andy. Yeah. I know you were as well. Very unfortunate for him. You've spoken so much about how Rafa has been your greatest rival, arguably, in your career. Um, you've come up with Andy. What has he meant in, in your legacy? Well, Andy, first of all, is a great champion, someone I admire uh, a lot, someone I respect a lot. You know, we had some great uh, encounters over the years on all different surfaces. We played finals in every slam. I think he's the only uh, player I played against every final. I, no, actually, it might be the case with Rafa as well, but, I mean, he definitely is uh, uh, next to Rafa and Roger, the greatest rival I ever had, and I think uh, there's something special to our rivalry, the fact that we are same age, there's, I think, only one month's difference between us in age. Uh, we grew up together. The first match we played against each other was under 12 in France in junior tournament. So uh, we go we go back a long time, and uh, I'm I'm really sorry to to for him that he he was not uh, able to come out on the court. Obviously, that's uh, it's not great for for the tournament. It's not great for our sport. Uh, everyone was looking uh, looking forward to that encounter. We haven't played, I think, in five years. Right. Um, but hopefully we'll get a chance to play soon. You've had uh, a bit of time away from the game, un unwanted, of course, this year. And um, I know you're a very introspective guy. You're, you're a man of faith. Can I ask uh, what lessons you've learned about yourself during this time, this reflective time? Well, I think uh, the one lesson that I keep on uh, learning, and <laughs> I don't know if I learn it or not, but I guess it's life is a learning process anyway, yep. a constant ongoing, is that I have to be more patient and then trust trust the process, you know, because uh, uh, because of the circumstances, you know, I haven't played many tournaments and then I played in Dubai, Monte Carlo, uh, you know, I was not close to my best, you know, I was still very rusty on the court. I didn't uh, didn't uh, strike the ball as cleanly as I would like. I didn't move as well physically. Also, I kind of didn't have much in the tank, and so um, you know that frustrated me. Obviously, the fact that I was looking forward to play a tournament after several months of break, and then I get on the court, and then I was not playing my best, which is in a way expected you know because of course uh, tennis is a demanding sport it's an individual sport so you got to play more in order to feel better particularly on clay um, so just just being being patient with with the whole process on day-to-day -day basis going out on the tennis court practice court and uh, going through my through my chores you know going through my shots making sure that uh, there is a the, the detailed approach to every shot and 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 then you know uh, uh, trusting that yeah. things will come together so I feel that already in Belgrade towards the end of the tournament things were coming better and better you know physically not so much but game wise yes and then here I've been feeling well you know I had 10 days before this tournament to prepare myself paid a lot of attention to stamina workouts uh, you know, trying to uh, work on my um, work on my fitness, really build my fitness, uh, and improve my shape on the tennis court as well. And uh, I played very well in the first match today. Obviously, I got the walkover, 
uh, from Andy and then you know I'm, I'm, I'm ready to play every single day you know I, I like the altitude here haven't been here for three years the last time I was here I won the title in 2019 so um, you know I, I, I like the way I've been striking the ball so to say so I I feel like the, the patience is a key as well and then trusting yourself, trusting the team, trusting the whole process. You mentioned the altitude here. It can be a great equalizer. We see some players who really adjust to it. Some are not huge fans of it. Do you feel it, it helps your game or it's just something you, you have to get used to? Well, uh, it, uh, I feel it does, it does help. I mean, to some extent, of course, as well, you... Um, it's a bit tricky because the ball flies through the air more than any other tournament uh, that is not on the altitude. Even though it's not extremely high altitude, it's I think 500 meters or something like that. But still, you can feel it, you know, because uh, particularly on a hot day with new balls, you know, it's not not easy to control um, the, pay, the the ball from the baseline. So it's good to come a bit earlier, get get those practice days in. Uh, but the, the more you play, the better I feel like you, at least in my case, the better I feel on the court with, this, with these conditions. Because uh, I'm getting used to everything, so the altitude is not affecting me in a negative way as much. And I, I got used to it, but then now I'm using it in my own, for my own interest, for my own advantage. And the ball is coming to you, so you, you, know, you can strike it nicely. And then, of course, use the serve. If you're serving well, that's a big advantage. Um, yeah, I, I've had some really uh, great results in the past year, so, uh, but of course every year is different and as I said, you haven't been here three years, but um, so far so good in the tournament. Now, you know, Novak, I can't let you go from our TC desk without digging into the, the greatness mindset of yours. When I saw you in Monte Carlo, I ran into you in the gym, of course, Saturday night, you're in the gym, and first thing you said was, you know what, no looking back, just forward, forward, forward. I'm only looking forward and positive. Yeah. That's easier said than done. For yeah. most, how do you manage to actually do that? Well, I, I mean, it's really about uh, what kind of perspective you take. I mean, and depends how you approach things, from which kind of angle you observe. Um, I was at, at the beginning, you know, after I came back from Australia, I must admit that I was a little bit... Um, maybe underestimating the emotional state that I was in. I, I, I thought, you know, well, I, I'm out of Australia, you know, it is what it is. It hap what, what happened, happened, I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, but then I, I, I did feel for the months to come that the, the emotional and mental traces of what was happening there were still there. And I just felt maybe in the last few weeks I started to kind of get out of that a little bit and move on and transform that into fuel and positive energy, you know. Um, but it was a, a kind of a, a situation or circumstances that I never faced in my life before. Uh, as, as, as many years that I've been on the tour and as much as experience I have on the, uh, in the tennis ecosystem on and off the court and being involved also with the player council and tennis politics and press and everything, I consider myself quite experienced with the different kinds of thing factors that that are part of our my life and 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 you know uh, tennis ecosystem but still this was something that was completely you know unexpected and and uh, so it, it did take a toll on me so m i think more more uh, m mentally emotionally than physically because i was just uh, trying to okay you know uh, figure things out go back to that optimal balanced state of mind mind and body and soul and just try to approach the next tournament as any other and and that's that was my mindset but then i realized that when i started to play official matches that it's actually not uh, easy to uh, just finish off with that you know i had to still deal with that uh, feeling of being I, I don't know it's 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 hard to explain i don't have any any words for that particularly but it's just that feeling that was kind of holding me back a little bit yeah. Uh, particularly in the first couple of tournaments in those matches I felt like I wasn't myself you know I was you know a bit more nervous than usual and just kind of in a more of a defensive mode uh, mentally uh, when I started to play you know points officially and uh, so it took me a little bit of time to go through that and I think in Serbia now with the crowd support and that great energy that I experienced there really helped me to go through it so you know hopefully from 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 now onwards it will it will go back to you know, optimal balance that I need in order to perform my best. 
Well, I tell you what, Novak, we've seen you overcome lots of different challenges. This one, of course, unprecedented, but it's been beautiful to see you work through all of that throughout your career. Thank you so much. And, and once again, your day off, unexpected, but thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. My guy, my guy. Appreciate it.